Hi everyone, today I want to show you a few different watercolour techniques that I use to paint this little bee in watercolour. I would consider myself a tight painter. I like detail, I'm drawn to it, but I also like watercolour to look like watercolour. I want to see those watercolour blooms and that beautiful transparency and vibrancy that watercolour has. I don't want it to be too tight. So I painted these bees the other day with all of that in mind. I forced myself to use bigger brushes than what I would normally use for such a small detailed subject. And once my drawing was done, I hardly looked at the reference photo. I glanced at it occasionally, but I didn't want to get drawn into all the detail and then try to start painting all of it. I wanted as much as possible the watercolour paint to paint the bee for me. I wanted the first wash to dictate what I would do with each bee. I use a negative painting technique similar to the technique I use when I paint bird feathers. I have a video about painting bird feathers negatively, so take a look at that if you're interested. When I painted negatively for this bee painting, I painted around the little legs to create the shape of them, and I flicked the darker colour into the yellow to create the hair. I'm drawing on some Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper here. This is A5 size paper which is 5.8 inches by 8.2 inches. I've got it taped to some board with some wide samurai washi tape that I bought at the hardware store. I'm using a Stedler mechanical pencil. I think this is 0.5 millimeters. So I just want the basic shape of the B with just a little bit of detail. One of the brushes I'm going to use is a Da Vinci mop brush. This is a series 435 and it's a number two. I would normally use a smaller brush to paint something this size, but today I just want to loosen up a little bit and just get this paint on as quickly as I can. So this brush holds a lot of paint and a lot of water. The first thing I want to do is paint the wings in and I want to dry brush them in so I pick up the paint with my brush drier than normal. And that way the paint will skip across the surface and leave the white paper showing. The legs are next, but this time my brush was wet when I picked the paint up because I want them to remain wet while I use the other colours around them. That way the paint I use around them will bleed into them and it will create some interesting effects. This is just a warm grey that I've mixed up from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. Now I've got some sepia on my brush. It's pale, so I've mixed some water into it. I'm going to paint this on all the darker areas of the bee, just on the dry paper. I deliberately touch the brush against the wet legs, just to make this colour bleed into the grey. I've left a little white highlight on the eye there, so I haven't put any paint there. I'm painting fairly quickly because I don't want the paint to dry yet. I want it to remain wet so that the colours will blend together and bleed into one another. So once I've got the brown where I want it, then I can pick up some yellow. There's quite a bit of pigment in my yellow. I want it to be quite bright. So this is Windsor Lemon that I'm using. And you can see that the brown is blending with the yellow. They're just bleeding into one another, those two colours. I deliberately touched the leg there with my brush just to make that yellow paint bleed into it. Now I've got some burnt sienna and I'm just dropping that onto the yellow areas. Now you're going to see me flatten out my brush to paint the little fine hairs around the edge of the bee. I separate the hairs with my fingers and then I use it like this. I took the water out of my brush and I separated the bristles with my fingers 
and then I just pulled that paint out onto the dry paper. You can buy brushes that are specifically designed to do that. They're called comb brushes or rake brushes. This is them here. These are old ones that I used when I painted in acrylic paint and they do the same thing. So with these ones you just pick the paint up and it does a similar thing. As you can see it's cut like it's a rake. Okay, back to the bee. I've just squeezed the water out of the brush and now I'm using my fingers to flatten it out and separate the hairs. Then I use it like this to pull some of that wet paint out onto the dry paper and that will create those fine hairs around the edge of the body of the bee. Again I want to work fairly quickly and get it done before that paint dries. Here I'm pushing a bit of that paint onto the wing because the wing is transparent and you'd see the body of the bee through the wing. Now as the paint is starting to dry I'm dropping some water onto it to create some deliberate watercolour blooms. That disturbs the pigment and creates some beautiful texture on the bee. The painting is dry now and you can see what the water did to that paint. I wanted it to do that just to create some interest on the surface. I can now work with that and build some detail over the top. This is a Da Vinci Maestro round brush, it's a number 5. I'll use this brush to paint all the detail. I start with the eye, I've got sepia again, this time it's darker so I've got more pigment mixed into it. Just painting on the dry paper. Now I'm going to paint the shape of the leg in negatively. So that just involves painting around the leg and that will form the shape of it. So then I just keep going and I flick my brush to create the hair. I'm using the brush right up on its tip. And I just keep going, I paint around the legs again and that just helps to bring them out so you can see them. Then when I've got a layer of that brown on there I start to drop in some lamp black just onto the wet paint and that just blends with the brown and darkens it. I've turned my board because I find it easier to pull strokes like this towards myself rather than push them away from myself. I just keep going adding hair till I'm happy with the way it looks. Then when I'm happy with the way it's starting to look I can drop some more water droplets in to create some more watercolour blooms in this surface. I've painted a bit more burnt sienna onto that yellow area and now I just want to add the detail onto the wings. So again I use this same brush, I'm not switching down to a finer brush and I'm just using sepia again, I'm running that over the wing just on the dry paper. I'm not looking at the reference photo, I'm just doing my own thing with this. Some areas I will push down on the brush and other areas I'll be right up on the tip to get the fine line. And I can paint the antenna in. Darken up the eye with some more black and finish painting the legs. And you 
you can see how that paint has bled into the legs there just to make them more interesting to look at. And then I can just add some more black if I think it needs it. So I'll just take the tape off. And because I can't help myself, I put a little bit more black on. Just a touch more hair on the back. So there are the two bees that I painted. A full length tutorial on both of these bees along with the line drawings and a copy of my finished paintings will be on Patreon soon. The link is in the description. In my video last week I talked about how much it has helped me to paint full studies before I paint the proper painting. Before I painted these two I painted all of these. So I painted 13 bees before I felt confident enough to start filming myself for a tutorial and there's still room for improvement. So I'll say it again, if you want to improve, you've got to practice. Put in that practice, it's the only way to get better. Thank you for watching, I hope this was useful to you. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you don't already. And I will see you next week with a new video.